Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let's discuss a bit on nakshatras today. Which are the two most important nakshatras among all the ten nakshatras that you have? Mm -hmm. Nine planets and one ascendant nakshatra. See, many times people think that, oh, we have to check the sun's nakshatra, ascendant nakshatra, moon's nakshatra. Okay, the ascendant lord's nakshatra. These uh, these four nakshatras are very crucial. But in my experience, I have seen they are not very useful necessarily all the time to predict results of dashas. Which planets are more crucial? The first planet is Jupiter. Jupiter is very crucial when it comes to uh, predicting the uh, upcoming dasha results. You may think, oh, but what if I don't run Jupiter Mahadasha in my life? Is it still important? This has nothing to do with will you run Jupiter's dasha or not. Okay? It has nothing to do with that. So Jupiter's uh, nakshatra is highly, highly, highly crucial. Why do I say this? Because think what Jupiter is actually. Jupiter represents the soul actually, the chit which becomes chitta when it comes to this world. Okay. So, who you are at a soul level is determined by Jupiter. Now, how do you, you, how do you utilize Jupiter's nakshatra when it comes to the upcoming dashas? So, suppose you, you, you are running um, Rahu Mahadasha, for example. So, now what, what you have to check is, how, what, what kind of a harmony is there between the nakshatras which, uh, where Rahu is sitting and where Jupiter is sitting. So, for example, if Jupiter is in Mula nakshatra, for example, I am saying. And suppose Rahu is in uh, Shatavisha nakshatra, for example. So, in that case, what happens? Now, Shatavisha is a totally different nakshatra. Mula is a totally different nakshatra. They have different flavors altogether. Okay. But now what happens is, you will have to see what traits they have in common. Common doesn't mean you just take, oh, this, this to have these common traits, so this will happen in your life. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the houses and the nakshatras which this Mahadasha Lord is uh, sitting in or signifying the houses, uh, or ruling, as I say. So, they, they, you, you have to check that nakshatra, in this case Rahu, for example. And uh, Satavisha for Rahu and Mula Nakshatra for Jupiter, for example, I'm saying. So what, what do you what do you think? Well, what could be common between these two nakshatras? Well, these two nakshatras can have a lot of inner transformation going in. A lot of suffering can be there. Uh, at the same time, if it is used properly, then a lot of spiritual awakening can be there. A lot of deep realizations can also be there. Right? So that's that that's what helps us because see why do i say this because moon represents the mind sun represents the soul okay not the atma okay the today's version of soul <laughs> sun sun does not represent the pure soul okay the pure soul is represented by jupiter so jupiter is something which does not change because jupiter is you Sun and moon, they represent parts of you, but they are not you. Do you understand the difference? <laughs> so therefore, if you only check sun, moon and ascendant, ascendant to is the last thing I see, or ascendant nakshatra. I mean, when you grade like this, why? Because ascendant or ascendant nakshatra can show focus. So what if in this life you are focusing on married life? Next life you may focus on career, depending on your karma and your inclinations. But that doesn't change you as a person, right? That doesn't change you. When I say you, I mean the soul, the Atma. Because Krishna says in the Gita, um, you are not this body, you are spirit soul. Right? That is what the Gita says. <laughs> so therefore, you have to understand that what Jupiter represents, that is the soul, that is constant. Okay? That will ultimately tell you to what extent are you able to harmonize with the Dashas. So, for example, if the nakshatra of Jupiter and your Mahadasha Lord's nakshatra, if they are totally uh, contradicting each other through houses or through traits or through other placements or conjunctions, then what can happen? Let, let's take an example. If a planet is in 10th house okay, and uh, then 
the dasha of that plant, plant gets activated so you get a promotion or you start your own business you get a lot of name and fame may you make huge amount of money but suppose this jupiter's nakshatra is not in harmony with that plan that planet's nakshatra yeah so then what will happen is even though you keep making money you keep getting a lot of praise name fame adoration distinction but there's no happiness on the other hand maybe you have a planet in the sixth house which does not show that big of a career progress it shows continuation of job but if that nakshatra is in harmony with your uh, jupiter's nakshatra you will be the most happiest person in this world therefore now now you know uh, why some plan why some people with some difficult placements they will not feel as if you know uh, life's bad and some people with so many good things they are always complaining creeping criticizing finding faults and pulling down others self self doubt you know doubting themselves why does this happen because jupiter which is they the soul the atma right not soul atma <laughs> they are themselves it's like saying they are in disharmony with the externals yes that's how it is because a mahadasha only changes your focus it doesn't change you should i repeat mahadasha changes the focus it does not change the person the person always remains the same yes it's contradictory right <laughs> it's like saying uh, in your home you have like 10 different things you know, or maybe you have three chairs so today maybe in this mahadasha you like to sit in the black chair next mahadasha you like this chair you know, brown color gray color chair maybe next mahadasha you like the white color chair now why do you like black now brown brown tomorrow white the next day nobody knows that depends on the planets but what i am saying is just because you are sitting in a different chair it doesn't mean you have changed right you are the same okay and that you is actually represented by jupiter so if you are thinking of worldly things at an external level then uh, you need to really check jupiter if the person is inquisitive about uh, how much happy the person will be or how much happiness the person can get or which areas can make the person more happier these things can only be answered by uh, seeing nakshatra of jupiter and the other nakshatra which is very crucial that's the nakshatra of saturn okay why because saturn is karma karaga now what does it mean when i say saturn is karma karaga let me push it a bit back side all right so saturn is the karaka for the 10th house which shows uh, how much effort can you put into something not only career anything in life people who have a very strong 10th house or a prominent 10th lord can put a lot of efforts in life in your bhav chart okay not in your lagna chart and now you will ask what's bhav chart so please type in youtube uh, exotic astrology bhav chart b h a or a a v c h a r t you will find my video okay it's a pink color thumbnail so please watch that video so if your 10th house is prominent in the bhav chart which means you have prominent planets there or you have planets in dikbala like sun or mars or your or your lagna lord and the 10th lord are somehow linked you know by any of the four yogas or if you have sun moon linked to the 10th lord okay um, or the 10th house so the, in in that case either ways by uh, degree of prominence or by sign by any means of astrology the more the better you can always put more efforts in life and do things for a sustained period of time so therefore when you are getting an opportunity in life it can be anything you know childbirth marriage career health that the dasha of a planet can bring you opportunities always remember but to what extent will you use those opportunities how will you utilize them to what extent will you use them uh, will you benefit from them benefit doesn't mean externally but how much will you transform inside as a person to use those opportunities properly you know, tomorrow suppose you get something very big in life then you also have to work to maintain it right so 
that's how you know actually so saturn's nakshatra is very important because many times people they will uh, ignore the nakshatra where saturn is sitting and that's a very big mistake uh, don't just see saturn nakshatra to check uh, how much suffering you have or how your saturn mahadasha or saturn antardasha will be that you can always do but irrespective of mahadasha or antardasha it was it is and it will always be saturn the karaka okay he is the karma karaka he is the uh, is the original 10th lord okay and now you may be thinking oh then in that case mercury is also important because mercury is the primary karaka for the 10th house okay that is true for mercury uh, you need more i made a video on mercury so i won't speak about mercury here so i guess monday i made the video so please watch that video on mercury why mercury is so important people always ignore mercury okay so i always give importance while uh, while doing consultations for uh, the nakshatras where jupiter and saturn they are placed because of two reasons to see the nature of the person and how much does a person want things in life want doesn't mean you know some greed or obsess obsession with materialistic things not in that sense but what i am saying is if a person is asking me too many big questions oh sir will i become a millionaire or will i get married or you know will i have children will i get into harvard or mit or whatever then i see uh, okay uh, maybe you can but then will you be able to maintain it because many times people they go into big universities and they drop out okay uh they are not able to maintain that and now many people will write here in the comments you know oh, this billionaire so and so very famous billionaire <laughs> also dropped out right but uh, you are not a billionaire now right so every drop out doesn't have to become a billionaire necessarily i'm talking in general okay but in kali yuga the problem is people do not understand they will just pick one or two exceptions from here and they will try to uh, say that uh, you, you don't know actually okay so in general i am saying okay 99% of the people if 99% probability is there if you are not having that level of discipline the university will uh, send you out they will fail you okay because you are not putting efforts okay uh, or maybe you are putting but not in the right direction either ways therefore will a person be able to use things properly in life and to what extent is a person wanting that at a soul level because see, it works very harmoniously these two nakshatras because one is the desire okay who the person is and then one is the efforts and that's what krishna says you know you desire and you put efforts then i give you the results okay don't think of results krishna says in gita so this actually these two nakshatras are very crucial so next time when you are uh, doing a consultation please uh, do not just jump to sun moon nakshatras okay they have their own importance i am not uh, downgrading those nakshatras never ever ever i am not doing that but when it comes to analysis of mahadashas because that will actually these two will tell you how the person will go, go through the mahadashas okay or the person will only go through or grow through you know there's a big difference going through dashas and growing through dashas right so <clears throat> if sun moon ascendant nakshatras are harmonious with this uh, mahadasha lord then the person might go or sometimes grow also but if jupiter saturn nakshatras are harmonious with the ma with the nakshatra of the mahadasha lord then wow it's like the person doesn't go he grows through it actually because at a soul level his desires are getting fulfilled okay because sometimes you get something which you don't want and sometimes you don't get something which you want right <laughs> so this is important if you try to see it at a deeper level okay but anyways either ways irrespective of whichever nakshatras jupiter sun moon or saturn they are sitting the mahadasha results will always come okay that's not the point of debate here it doesn't mean if jupiter saturn nakshatras are not in harmony with that planet's nakshatra uh, and that planet's mahadasha starts then it doesn't mean you will not get those things okay so if a planet is in seventh house you will get married okay problem depending on the other factors of course i mean there is a probability that you will get married so just because it's not harmonizing with jupiter it doesn't mean that marriage is denied okay if it is in your bhav charts seventh house there is a probability you might get married if you are of marriageable age and you have the desire of course so 
and the overall horoscope permits married life or good married life or decent married life at least all right so that is not dependent on any other planets okay so, but if you want to see at a deeper level how much will the person evolve and how much can the person continue then you must check these two nakshatras okay that will be all from my side thank you very much for your patience and if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation you will find my website also down below god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there for you